Hey guys, happy Friday. We made it, we made it through another week. I say that every week, but it's so true. You know, some weeks are just harder than others. This week has been exceptionally busy. <laughs> and I think I said that yesterday on Jesse James Feeds. I was not, um, I was not embellishing. It totally has been a very busy week. And I am counting down, counting down till five o'clock, <clears throat> excuse me, so I can call it a day. Going to get my nails done, got to pack my bags, made sure that I had plenty of clean socks. I am so ready. <laughs> There's nothing worse than traveling with not enough pairs of socks. You guys, I can't tell you how serious it is. Like, <laughs> it's totally random, non-jewelry related, but there is nothing like flying on a plane with only one pair of socks on. I don't know what it is, but every time I fly, my feet freeze. So I put on like extra socks, no matter what time of year it is, I put on extra socks when I fly. But then when I get to where I'm going, I use up all my socks and then it ends up, I don't have an extra pair for the flight home so that I can double up on my socks and I freeze the whole way home. Totally random. I know. <laughs> but yeah, so those are the things that are on my mind today. <laughs> It's probably safe to say I am a little distracted, very excited, and um, <clears throat> very anxious. It's a long haul. The trip out to Tucson for me is going to be a full day of uh, flying. So anyway, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. But before I go to Tucson, I have another amazing project to share with you guys today. We are still working on the orange, right? Orange, you glad? I'm so glad. I love, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm beginning to really love, I put it that way. I'm beginning to love orange. It's one of those colors you guys have a hard time with and I do too. And so this has really been a great way to kind of bring orange into my life a little bit. You know, I'm wearing my orange necklace that we made yesterday and we are making some really cool chandelier earrings today and we're going to be using some orange beads as well. You guys take advantage of the 30% off on jessiejamesbeads.com. Orange U is the coupon code to use on checkout to get 30% off of anything from the orange collection. And I'm talking, you can hardly hear me. That's not good. Thank you for telling me, Anita. <clears throat> Maybe if I scoot up a little bit, you let me know, okay? I'm sorry. Let me adjust my volume just a tiny bit too. All right, let me know if you still can't hear me, okay? Um, what was I saying? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. Oh, we were talking about orange and um, the orange collection. So we're using from today. No, that's not what I was going to say. I was talking about the orange collection over on the website. Sorry. Like I said, distracted. Um, so I am showing you some beads from the minimalist collection. I don't know if you guys remember these beads or not, but over on the website, on the Jesse James Beads website, if you um, click on collections on the pull down menu, the minimalist collection was a, a series of beads. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm trying to get as close as I can without taking you right up my nose. <laughs> that would not be a good thing. That would not be a good thing. Okay. Um, the Minimalist Collection was a collection of beads that came in a bunch of different colors and we did minimalist jewelry, which is kind of different for Jesse James beads because we're really big and bold and our beads are, um, you know, large and in charge. And so the Minimalist Collection was a collection that came in a bunch of different colors and you could make minimal jewelry with it, right? Or you could take the minimalist collection because it had a lot of great check glass beads and mini tassels and incorporate that into your other designs, right? You didn't have to use them that way. That's just what we called them because the beads for that collection were small. Anyway, there is a mix called Cockatiel and that is also included in the orange collection on the website. So you can get this exact collection for 30% off. And so that's what I was trying to get at in a roundabout kind of way. When you go over to the website and shop, look under shop by color, pull down orange and look at everything that that involves, right? Because that's going to involve not only your beads and your strands and your design element mixes, but it's also going to include things like charms, pendants, specialty beads. So it's all orange, 
all things orange. And um, that's a lot to choose from, you guys. The orange collection, there is some great stuff over there. So if you're dipping your toe into the orange, this is the way to go for sure. All right, so it looks like we are having some technical issues. On my end, everything seems to be okay. I'm, I still have the live counter. I can see who's here. Um, I don't really know what else to do, so I just cross my fingers that everything goes okay. Um, I'm nice and charged up. In fact, let me plug in. You never know, right? I'm gonna plug in and see if, excuse my elbow, you guys. See if that will make any difference whatsoever. I've got my volume turned up nice and loud. You guys just keep me posted, okay? All right, oh, Kathy says, there you are. Good, I'm glad. <laughs> you never know, you never know. Sometimes it's Facebook, sometimes it's the iPad, sometimes it's just me. Jane says it's always me, so. <laughs> All right, good. Okay, so let me show you guys the earring that we're gonna make. Some of you have seen it on the teaser picture, some of you have not. This chandelier earring, this is not a hard project. This is gonna be a pretty quick one. We're gonna whip this up pretty quickly, um, but I'm gonna show you how you can make some adjustments to this, right? Because this is a big, big earring. Um, if you want a smaller earring, you can definitely trim this down just a bit. Um, we are going to use my favorite tool on the planet, the step to bell making pliers, which, by the way, for those of you who are interested in these, these are back in stock over on Jesse James Speeds. They are back in stock over at Beadalon as well. I think. <laughs> I'm, I know for sure they're at Jesse James Speeds. All right, so if you guys are interested in that tool, pick it up. You will love it. And is there anything else we need to talk about before we get to it? I don't think so, but you never know. Let me move this piece of felt that is the wrong color out of the way and we will get down to business guys all right here we go all right so for the project today you are going to need a couple of different things let's see <clears throat> you're going to need your step to bell making pliers if you don't have the step to bell making pliers you can use the small bell making pliers for this as well. So don't feel like, oh, I can't do this project because I don't have the tool. You can do this with the small bell making pliers. And as a matter of fact, you can also do this with the um, round nose pliers. And you can do this with your memory wire finishing pliers. Weird, right? Um, but there are a lot of different ways you can you can achieve this exact same earring design. Okay, So don't think that what I'm showing you is the only way to do this. So what you're going to need, we're going to make the ear, we're doing everything today, guys. We're even doing the ear wire since I've got the bell making pliers, the stepped ones out. So what you're going to need is you're going to need three pieces of 18 gauge wire for this. And I do have a little bit more than I need, but you guys, I don't, I feel like I probably don't even need to tell you that anymore at this point. You guys have, <laughs> you guys have seen me use way more wire. So we've got a four inch piece a six inch piece and an eight inch piece, okay? If you wanna make smaller earrings, you can take one of the tiers off of this design or you can shorten up the loop components that we're gonna make. I'll show you as we go along. So we're gonna start and we're gonna use the size, I believe this is the three, three millimeter mandrel portion of our stepped bell making pliers. Again, use the smaller mandrel on your small bell making pliers if you need to, okay? If you don't have this. Um, and we're just gonna start right at the end of a piece. This is the four inch piece of our 18 gauge wire. And I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna turn a simple loop right at the end, okay? Oh, James says he's homesick. I'm sorry, James, I hope you feel better soon, friend. That's no good. A lot of sickness going around, for sure. All right, so now we're going to make another loop. We're going to start this bottom, or I'm sorry, this is the top tier. The top tier is going to have five loops, okay? And it's kind of deceiving. I'll show you. This is the, the top tier. This is what we're about to do. So we've done the first loop. We're going to do the rest of the loops. Um, it's a little deceiving because this is such a short 
component that you need so much wire, right, to create all those loops. But it does take a lot more wire than it looks like it does. So don't skimp on the wire with this. All right, so to create our next loop, we're gonna go directly next to the first loop that we made. All of these loops, there's no spacing between them, okay? So you're just gonna turn a loop directly next to the first one that you created. I'll take this off the tool so you can see it. There you go. Angie, you are so right. Half of Tennessee schools are out for illness. We've been out um, all week. We've been, well, not all week. They let us, they let kids out and told them not to come back on Tuesday. So we've been out. Luckily, we're all well, but yeah, sickness is big right now. It's very, um, very prevalent in our area. There's the third loop, okay? And you'll notice I'm just taking the tool and placing it directly next to the last loop that I made. Okay, and you can do this two different ways. You can either turn the tool, which is what I like to do, or you can turn the wire and hold the tool stationary. It's totally up to you. It's whatever you are more comfortable with. There are four loops. We're gonna do the last one. Okay, you can see we've got a little bit of a tail left, but I feel like that was it's okay that this is the amount of waste that we have left over, right? Because we really needed that extra amount. That's just enough to hold on to with your fingers. So you could cut this a little bit shorter if you wanted to, but I wouldn't go too much shorter than the four inches for this five loop section, um, just so that you have got some leverage while you're making your loops, okay? All right, so the first little one is ready to go. We're gonna come in with our cutter tool. I'm using a flush cutter, which I, I definitely recommend for this because you are gonna be able to see the ends of the wire, okay? So the flush cutter, remember the flush side of the tool is where you want to cut, where you want to keep the wire, right? Everything that you don't want is gonna go on the non-flush side, okay? I'm gonna cut this loop right here, cut the tail off right towards the top, just so that I have a full loop, okay? Don't wanna to cut too short down here. I don't want to cut off so much that the loop is not a complete loop, right? Okay. Jane, I'm using 18 gauge wire for this. Okay, so this guy's gonna need a little bit of shaping and then we're gonna put it on the block. So what I want is I want a very slight V shape with this. It doesn't have to be a really deep V just a little bit, right? Just gonna give it a little squeeze to get more of a V shape with this, okay? You can go crazy with this if you want to and make it a really, really deep V, but it really doesn't need it, to be honest with you. Um, I feel like just the small little curve in that component is all you're gonna need. So now I'm gonna bring in Trisha wants to know where you can find the flush cutters. So the flush cutters are available on Jesse James Beads and they are also available through Beadalon. And all, in fact, all of the cutters that I showed you guys in the tools, um, Monday question and answer, you can get through Beadalon. I'm fairly certain these are in stock on Jesse James Beads, um, but just because this is a tool that I use all the time. So we try to keep these, these stocked. Okay. So I'm placing this on the block. I'm gonna use my nylon hammer for this and we're just gonna work hard in this just a little bit. Doesn't take a whole lot because remember, when you are working with wire, you're work hardening it as you are creating those loops, right? You've got an even stronger piece now than what you started with just by manipulating the wire into those round shapes. Oops. <clears throat> so I, if I can keep it on the tool, just gonna work hard in this just a little bit. Don't need a whole lot. Do make sure you do both sides though, okay? All right, so I'm gonna call this one ready, okay? I'm just gonna sit this one over to the side with the block, we'll come back to that. All right, now we're gonna take the next big piece. This is our six inch piece and we are going to create seven loops with our six inch piece. Oh gosh, Joan says, I caught the flu from an airplane or airport a few, years, a few years back. Actually, Neelay and I were just having that conversation before this live. We were talking back and forth through text about um, how germy the airports 
<laughs> and the airplanes are, I'm flying with my Clorox wipes. I'm not taking a mask with me. I'm not that extreme, but I'm definitely taking the Clorox wipes with me. They say the tray, ta the tray table is the most germy thing on the airplane. So I know it makes me a little bit nervous, but I can't think about that. I have to, I have to stay focused. It's going to be a good time. All right. So same thing. We're just using a six inch piece of wire for this. And so James wants to know when you are making the loops, can you stack the loops differently or do they have to go right on top of each other? You can totally stack the loops differently. In fact, it's a really good question. And let me show you a little, let's see if I can find it. What did I do with it? Let me show you a, a, a little trick that <laughs> is not really off topic. So I have a coffee straw here, right? And some of you, I know Joan will, because we, we talked about this when um, we were at our last bead society meeting, how you can use a coffee straw and cut it, measure it and cut it in different sections, right? So that you can make spacing between your knots when you're knotting pearls or gemstones or whatever, right? Well, you can kind of do the same thing. Let me grab a pair of scissors. You can kind of do the same thing when you're making loops. Um, with wire. So you would just lay this down on a, um, on goodness, <laughs> on a ruler, right? Measure out the spacing that you want. I'm just going to fake it for now. Okay. And cut that section off of your coffee straw. Okay. So there's your little coffee straw in the spacing that you want. But the next thing you want to do is you want to come in and you want to cut, right? Cut a slice in it and then Right next to that slice, cut another slice. So we're cutting out just this minimal section of the straw on the side, right? So now we can get our wire in between there. So I've just got a practice piece here and I'll show you. So I take, I'll go ahead and make the first loop, right? Okay, so now I want this amount of space that I've measured and cut between my loops, my wire loops. So I'm going to thread this on, right? Thread on my coffee straw spacer. Now I'm going to come in with my tool. Okay. Try to get it right up next to the coffee straw. Make my loop, right? And the reason you had to cut that space right? Cut down the side so you can take it off the wire, right? Because you, you can't slide it off again. So you can slide it on the end the next time to make your spacing, right? But then when you make your next loop, you're going to have to pull it off this direction. So that's just a little cheat for you guys. If you want to space your loops out, clearly this is a huge space and that's not really as much space as you're going to want for this particular project but you can cut this little coffee straw down <laughs> all the way to a fourth of an inch if you wanted to right just so that you're not kind of eyeballing it every single time it never fails when I'm eyeballing it I mess it up and some of them are not spaced evenly and I'm sure you guys that there is probably an actual tool that will do this trick um, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure that something exists. But for me, coffee straws are going to work. You know, I mean, it's for one thing, they're cheap. You can get a whole bunch of them at once. And if you lose it, no big deal. You can cut another one. So, yeah, just a little. That was a great question. Thank you for asking that, James. It gave me the opportunity to show that off a little bit. Okay. So, moving on to the next tier in our earring. This is a six inch piece. We're just going to do our loops just like we did with the first one. So we'll get that first loop started. We're going to make seven loops. So I'm just putting the tool. James says, what about alternating behind and in front if they are really close together? Yep. 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 And I'll show you that here in just a second. Gosh, you're on the ball today, James. I love it. You're just guiding me right along to show everybody good stuff. <laughs> Being sick is, is looking good on you. <laughs> I hate it that you're sick, but it's looking good on you. All right, so we're just going to continue creating our loops. Okay, there's two. And there's three. Okay. Here's four. Oh, if I can get it off the tool. There's four. 
there's five. And there's six. We'll do one more. Angie wants to know if you can use a wire jig. You absolutely can. However, you're gonna get what James is looking for and that's a little bit more spacing in between here. When you're using a jig, your loops are not gonna be this close together, which is might be a good thing. Um, that's a great way to keep them from being all stacked up, right? Um, so yeah, definitely you can use a jig for this. You just line them up in a straight row and then just wrap around them that way. All right, so again, we're gonna trim off our tail, making sure that we don't cut off too much because we still want to have that complete circle on the end, okay? And now, just like with the other one, I'm gonna give this a little bit of a bend, a little bit of a V, and to double check it, I'm gonna bring in the first one that I made just so that they're kinda similar as far as the, the depth of that V. Right, I don't want them to be, I don't want one to be a really deep bend and one of them not to be. All right, so there's that. I'm gonna put this on the block and work hard in this just a bit. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to set this one to the side. We're going to do one more for the bottom and then we'll put the earring together. But let's go back to the question that James had. So James was asking if it will make a little bit more space in between <clears throat> if you make your loops in different directions. And if you guys will remember the owl pendant that we made, that was um, a really good example of making your loops two different directions. Let me cut these off on the bottom just so that this is not distracting, okay? So again, this is just the practice piece. So normally, well not normally, but depending on what you're going for, right? If you're gonna make your loops, both loops in the same direction, eventually what's gonna happen is you're gonna create, they and they will stack up on you, so you have to flatten them down, which is exactly what we're doing, right? So when you look at them from the side, you see how they're not nice and flat until you put them on the block, right? Well, to keep them nice and flat and to give them a little bit more space in between, James was saying that you can alternate the way that you're gonna do your loops. So we're going to make one loop this direction, right? Okay, now the next loop, we're gonna bend the wire and go back behind, right? Take it off of the tool and bend it on around. And this was kind of a messy example, but this keeps them from being stacked up on, on each other. This makes them more side by side. And so you would just alternate, right? Do one that direction. Oops, <laughs> I'm making these really tight so it's hard to get it off the tool. And then the next one we would go behind. And now I've run out of wire because of this little piece down here. Let me trim this off, but I'll show you. So this is gonna keep your loops, terrible example you guys, but that's gonna keep your loops more side by side, right? Instead of stacked on top of each other right? And you can space this out even more by just moving down just a hair, just a fraction is all it's going to take to move your loop down just a tiny bit. That's not something you're necessarily going to need to measure, right? But so you do one going one direction and one going behind. So just a normal loop and then the next loop is going to come from the back side. That's going to help make your piece nice and flat, right? That's how we made our little owl eyes. All right, so we're ready for the very last tier. This one's gonna have nine loops, so this is a larger piece. This is um, an eight inch piece. Suzanne wants to know, could you use this for forming spacer bars? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. In fact, when you're making spacer bars, I would recommend going like I just showed you, instead of all going in the same loop-de-loop -loop pattern, I would go this way and this way, but this time around, this one's gonna go behind, right? The second one's gonna go behind. That's gonna make your spacer bar a little bit um, flatter in the end.
All right, so same thing. I'm just gonna create our loops here. And we are gonna do nine loops. Ooh, yeah, James says you could go one way with half of your loops and then the other direction with your other loops and give it a pyramid shape, yes. So that's the one thing about wire, play around with it because there are so many different things that you can do and just these simple adjustments to you know, taking the wire behind instead of in front to making a loop is gonna make a, a, a major difference, right? So there's five. There's six. Seven, eight, and nine. All right. <laughs> James says, I love wire. I do too. <laughs> I'm a wire person for sure. If you guys haven't figured that out yet, I love wire. All right, so here is our bottom section. I'm gonna go ahead and trim off. Okay. <clears throat> and now I'm going to create that V shape, All right? And again, I want to refer to the other ones just to make sure, hold on a second. I did that one with a smaller piece of wire, I think. Oh, no, it's this one. I did that one with a big piece. Happen there that's all right so I'm just going to refer to the other pieces just to be sure and there we go they're going to stack this direction for our earring we're going to attach these with a series of jump rings but first I need to work hard in this don't want to forget that part because I'm definitely going to be wearing these this is not just for demo purposes this is an actual pair that I intend to wear all right, so just, whoa, work hard in this a little bit. That V, a little bit too big there, that's okay. Okay, so now we're ready to put all of this together and we're just gonna use some six millimeter jump rings. <clears throat> Yeah, Suzanne, you are right. You can leave the tail on to hold on to it while you're work hardening it. That does make it easier. It keeps it from flying off of the <laughs> flying off of the block on you. That's for sure. All right, so I'm gonna grab a bunch of six millimeter jump rings. We're gonna put all this together, and then we're gonna put together. I actually have two four millimeter jump rings in here too. Um, we're gonna put together the ear wire, and we're gonna make our little dangles for the bottom. Okay, so. This is gonna take quite a few jump rings, but that's okay because they really just kind of disappear into the whole piece, right? So we're just gonna use six millimeter jump rings here and here on both sides, okay? And then two here, a four millimeter, and then a six millimeter to put these together, okay? So I'll show you, I'll show you. So I'm just gonna hook onto that last loop on one of the components and the last loop on the next component up. Close that together, okay? And add another jump ring to the exact same loop that we just added, right? So this middle component's gonna have two jump rings. Deb says, will the tail be harder to cut off? No, it won't. It will still, it'll still come off fairly easily, not a problem. All right, so that's one side ready to go. And now we're gonna do the other side. And it kind of helps to hold this all up while you're attaching it so that you don't get things twisted. I have a tendency if I'm laying all of my parts down and trying to add the jump rings while it's all laying down um, to get to get one of the components twisted in here and then you have to undo it. So James wants to know if I make my own jump rings or if I buy them. These in particular are ones that I have bought just um, 
because they match this wire and I got lucky because a lot of times it's hard when you have got, um, particularly with gold colored wires, it's really hard to match up the gold color wire with gold color components and um, other findings. Um, I got lucky. Most of the time though, when I'm working with a gold color wire, I'll make my own jump rings just so that I know for sure that everything is gonna match. Like for the ear wire that we're gonna make, I'm, I definitely used a matching gold color for the ear wire because I feel like that's such a big part of the earring. It's not the main focus obviously, but I, I don't like it when my ear wires don't match. <laughs> I'm kind of particular about that. So it's kind of, it's just kind of a, I guess the real answer to your question, James, is sometimes I buy them if I can get lucky with the colors, but for the most part, I try to make my own. Okay, so we're gonna do another series of jump rings here. So we're gonna do a six millimeter, a four millimeter, and another six millimeter here, just to give some length. And we're gonna do six millimeter here, four millimeter, and another six millimeter on that side, right? Then we're gonna take a single six millimeter in the center, and that's where we're gonna put our ear wire. So I'm gonna leave this one off until the very end because we're gonna make our ear wire and we'll just do that all together. So let's just link these couple of ear wires together, and then we will work on the dangles for our earring. Okay. So I just went ahead and thread on that four millimeter before I closed. And now this one's gonna attach to that four millimeter as well. And again, you just wanna be sure everything's going in the right direction before you attach everything, okay? Whoa. A little magnetized here okay could you use chain instead of the jump rings yes you absolutely could and this kind of goes back to um, the matching metal situation so gold is just hard you guys and if you make jewelry you know that finding gold that matches is difficult. And so part of the reason that I'm using the jump rings here instead of small pieces of chain is because I did not have a piece of chain that was the same color, right, as the rest of my earring. And so I used the jump rings because they matched. Um, but yeah, you could use small pieces of chain here, about a fourth of an inch piece on either side or a, um, you know, a half inch piece would be perfect. Um, Suzanne says this would make a beautiful pendant. It would. And you know what? We're going to hang dangles from the bottom of this. We're going to hang a, ta a tassel here and then two beads on either side. Um, but you could hang beads from every single one of these loops and fill it up and have like the coolest cha-cha earrings ever. So this design you can do a lot of things with. And back to that point a little bit, we talked about in the beginning how I was gonna tell you how you could shorten this up because this is gonna be a really large earring once we get the dangles attached. Um, to shorten this up, you could, instead of making this bottom piece nine, you could make this a seven and this a five and this a three. Obviously, you know, you could just change the numbers up a bit and it would shorten up and make everything a little bit more compact. Or you could just leave off this bottom tier completely and just have the two tiers. So you can change the entire design up quite a bit with just making some adjustments in how many loops or how many tiers. You could continue to go on and make even more tiers and make a really big statement piece if you wanted to, whether it was a pendant or a pair of earrings. So you could go a lot of different, a lot of different ways with this for sure. Okay. So we're gonna bring in our beads and I'm gonna use one of these really cool orange tassels that's gonna go in the middle and then we're gonna use some of these check glass orange beads from the Minimalist Collection over on Jesse James Beads. Get your 30% off on your orange. And we are going to add these to some knotted head pins. So I've already made three of these and <clears throat> 
and won't keep you around here forever. So we'll just do one and then we'll thread them all on, okay? And then we're just gonna attach these with jump rings. You definitely could wire wrap these directly onto the component if you wanted to, but it's up to you. So I've got a, a three and a half, four inch piece of um, 22 gauge wire and my round nose pliers. I'm gonna grab that wire right at the tip. I'm gonna roll it around the top of the pliers once and then a second time directly underneath the first one. And you wanna stop right where you see the flush cut of the wire before you take it off of the tool, bend it out this direction. Okay, take it off. And then we're gonna take the tail end of that wire and stick it through the loops that we made. And then we're gonna bring in our nylon jaw pliers, okay? And that little tail is sticking right out. We're gonna grab that, but first you wanna make sure that your two loops that you've created are right up against the side of the pliers, okay? Don't let there, don't leave any space in between there. Take the tail end of the wire and just pull, whoa. <laughs> Don't let go. You might hurt yourself or the person sitting next to you. So you're just going to pull. You've created this cute little rosette shape, and that's going to be your head pin to hold your beads on. So then you just want to thread your bead on, and there you go. All right, so we're going to create wrapped loops on the top of these. <clears throat> Move this out of the way just a little bit, okay? Grabbing the wire right as it is exiting the bead, bending the wire 90 degrees. Coming in with our round nose pliers, we're going up and over. Roll the pliers around in your hand to get them out of the way. And then you are going to do your wire wrapping right there, okay? Come in and trim off your tail. Now, one thing I want to point out, because this is a smaller <clears throat> bead that we're using here. I don't mind the bulkiness of the knotted head pin here. If you don't like how big, if I can get my fingers out of the way, you can kind of get a good look at it, right? If you think this knot down here is too big for this bead, then you can go down a size in the wire that you're using. I'm using 22 gauge for this, but if you step down to the 24 gauge, then your knot is gonna be a little bit smaller and not gonna be nearly as large. Duh, I just said that. What I mean is, <laughs> It's not gonna be as distracting. Oh my goodness, you guys, it's definitely a Friday. All right, okay, so there's one. I've got three more head pins ready to go, so we're gonna thread these on. Sometimes the things that come out of my mouth, I'm like, really, did I just say that? <laughs> okay, so again, bending, bringing in the round nose pliers. If it's small, then it's obviously not large. Oh my. I'm glad you think that's funny and you didn't just leave like, oh gosh, this girl. <laughs> just laugh with me, you guys. Just laugh with me. If you can't laugh at yourself, I laugh at myself several times a day. I'm hilarious. No, <laughs> not because I'm hilarious, <laughs> because sometimes I'm just so darn goofy. All right. <laughs> Deb says, you're just excited to go to Tucson. That's it. I'm going to use that as my excuse. My brain does not work because I have Tucson brain. <laughs> oh, but then what's going to be my excuse when I get back? I'm just a little goofy. <laughs> All right, trimming that one off. It's true, though. I am totally distracted. I'm thinking of all the things that I need to pack when I get finished here. I've got to pack up all my tools. And then I've got to pack my actual clothes, which I always save until the end because that's the worst. And I have to pack light because the last time I went to Philadelphia, my, um, my suitcase was too full and they were like, I'm sorry, we're going to have to charge you an extra $50 for your luggage if you don't take some of the weight out. <laughs> Mind you, I was carrying steel blocks and hammers and those types of things with me, but still, I was like, wow, I need to learn how to pack lighter. Okay, so we've got our four beads and our little tassel. We're going to attach these with some jump rings. So, need five jump rings out of here. And I don't know, 
how I lost some of my jump rings. Yeah, and don't forget the extra socks. I have to pack extra socks. I had to make sure that I did a whole load of laundry that was socks, just to be sure that I had plenty. <laughs> Oh, what a funny thing to, to worry about. But, you know, it's stuff like that that comes up that you're like, oh, I'm going to remember next time. i got to have extra socks for when I fly. My feet get so cold. All right, so I'm going to start in the middle. I've attached my little tassel here to a jump ring. I'm going to thread that onto the middle loop on that bottom tier. And now I'm going to stagger the beads. Whoops. I'm gonna attach them. I'm just gonna skip one. Hi, Sherry, good afternoon. I'm, so after the tassel, I'm gonna skip one, go to the next one, attach my bead there. Okay, one more time. And then we'll make the ear wire for this and then I will let you guys get on with the rest of your wonderful Friday. And I will go take care of all of the things that are stressing me out. <laughs> moment I'm so excited I'm just I'm so I'm just so happy to be going really all right <clears throat> all right starting from the center we're going the other direction now we're skipping one Suzanne financially I think January and February is hard for everybody. There's, you know, you're coming off of the tail end of the holidays. There are a lot of extra expenses that happen. Even if you don't buy a ton of gifts for people, there's always extra things that you spend money on during the holidays, no matter how hard you try not to. And, you know, unfortunately, it's tax season too, and a lot of people are working on their taxes. And if you don't get a refund, I never get a refund. In fact, I have to pay this year. Um, it can be it can be a financial hard time this time of year for sure. So I'm feeling you. My neighborhood association is also due. Just a lot of things that come up. So I completely understand. Um, it's it's difficult to travel this time of year for sure. All right. So that whole thing is ready to go. We just need to add the ear wire to the top of it. So because I have my magical pliers, my favorite pliers in the whole world, we're going to make the ear wire because this is my favorite tool to make the ear wires with. So I'm going to use the same three millimeter mandrel portion that we um, were using to make our loops. Just going to turn a loop right here at the end, okay? And this is 20 gauge wire. I'm sorry, I completely left that part out. This is 20 gauge German style wire. Um, 20 gauge is normally what I use to make my ear wires. Okay, so we've made the first loop. Now we're gonna use the large mandrel here for the actual ear wire itself. I'm gonna place that wire into the tool where that loop is right up against the pliers, okay? And I'm just gonna turn my wire on around. I'm gonna take it off the tool so I can show you. There is our little shepherd's hook. So now I'm gonna come in with my flush cutter and I'm gonna lay that loop right up against the edge, right, of my flush cutter. That makes me, that makes a perfect measurement for every ear wire so I know that they're all the exact same size when it comes to cutting this part, okay? So that's just a good rule of thumb. Now I'm just gonna trim, okay? Now that's not a very pretty shape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in with our chain nose pliers and I'm gonna grab just the tip, okay? And I'm gonna bend it out this direction, give it a little bit of a hook. And then I'm also gonna take both sides and kind of open it up just a little bit. So now we have an ear wire. And if you guys are picky about ear wires, and I am, I'm one of those people who I'm very, very picky about ear wires. Um, because some of them hurt my ears after wearing them all day long. This is a very, very comfortable pair of ear wires. It's the shape of this, that big round that you've got here is very similar to um, lever back ear wires. So it's going to fit in your ear that way, right? It's, it's just a comfortable earring to wear. Okay, now we're going to put this on the block and we are going to work harden. Okay, 
Now, before I go any further, though, there's one more thing I have to do to this. You really, really, really need to take a wire rounder tip of any kind, right? And round off the tip of your wire. Don't sell earrings without rounding off the tip if you make your own ear wires. I use um, my uh, bead reamer. It has an attachment that you can buy from Beadalon. Well, I'd take it out of there if I could get it out of there. It's really in there. But it's just a little insert. You take out the bead reamer tip and you insert the wire rounder tip into it and it fits down in the tool so you don't have to have more than one tool for this. There are manual ones of these as well so you don't have to buy one but I like mine because it's battery operated, right? And I don't have to, <laughs> I don't have to work as hard. So I'm just gonna place the end of my wire right in that little cup on the wire rounder tip. Oh, maybe. I'm gonna turn it on and then I'm just gonna kind of rotate it around a bit. So this is going to round out that tip on the wire so that it's going to be really comfortable to go through your ear. And it's also taking care of any little wire burrs that are left behind. Um, even the ones that you can't see. You can look at an ear wire that you've done yourself and you think, okay, well, I've flush cut it really well and there's, you know, there's not anything sticking up. I'm talking microscopic pieces and the microscopic pieces are the ones that can really inflame your piercing. I know a lot about piercings because I'm such a weirdo. Um, <laughs> but, but those little microscopic pieces of, of wire, those little jagged pieces that you can't see, it only takes one of those to create a major problem with an ear piercing. So do yourself and your customers a favor and wire around the tips of your ear wires, okay? Big, big time important. All right. So Suzanne wants to know if I'll make another one. Yes, I will make another one. I actually had enough wire just to do that. So I will make one more. Um, let me set this one to the side. I always start with my flush cut end. So be sure that you've got a nice flush end on your wire. And again, I'm coming in with a step to bell making pliers. I'm using that three millimeter mandrel portion of the pliers. Grab, turning a loop. Okay, and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it in the very back of the pliers so that I can use the largest portion of the tool to create the ear shape. Okay, so I'm just going to guide that wire around the largest part of the tool, okay, and then taking it off. Okay, so now to make sure that's the same size as the other one, I'm going to bring in my flush cutter and I'm laying that loop this edge of the loop right up against the side of the side or the flush cutter, okay? So that I make the same cut every single time, okay? So they're always gonna be the same size. There's no measuring, there's no thinking about it too much, there's no eyeballing it, it's always gonna be the same size, okay? Then you just wanna come in with your chain nose pliers just to give it a little turn. So you've got a little crook at the end and then you're gonna take the two sides and kind of open them up just a little bit, okay? And that's all. You just wanna work hard it and round out the tip and you've got an ear wire. I can work these up super, super quickly, um, super easy. Joan says <clears throat> she never has a problem with them staying in her ears, but she uses those plastic earring backers. Yeah, I do too. And a lot of times if I'm going to be selling even this shape of ear wire, if I'm going to be selling an earring, I will put an extra plastic little backer thing on here just so that it's there if the customer needs it. And I always have extras. That's a really, really good tip. Um, let's see. There was another. Oh, Angie says I miss all your piercings. That's funny. I um I actually put in a loop, a hoop in my nose for my Tucson trip. I usually just wear a stud in my nose, but I I I couldn't stand it anymore. So I put a loop in it, a hoop. I've got loops on the brain today. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling a little feistier, but the rest of my piercings, I just you know they're all in my ears. I just fill them up. I did have an extra Monroe piercing on my face. And when I turned 30, I was like, okay, that's got to go. <laughs> but I'll never, I'll never lose the nose ring. I refuse. I refuse. All right. One of these has the rounded tip. That's this one. 
All right, so now I'm just gonna attach this to the top of my earring and we will be ready to put these on and wear them. And you can bet I'm gonna be wearing these while I'm in Tucson. So I don't wear a lot of orange, but I'm using this pair of earrings as an opportunity to <clears throat> bring more orange into my life. Okay, so just taking my last jump ring, threading it through that top six millimeter, threading it through my ear wire, and threading that through. And actually, it looks like I thread my ear wire on the wrong direction. So let's do that again, shall we? Okay. Oh my goodness. All right, well, I was trying to put that in the middle. I don't know what I was thinking. You guys, I'm, I'm so flustered. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my goodness, I was trying to put the ear wire on before that second jump ring. That's just goofy. That's just one of those days. So there we go, there is our earring. And I do have a set, making sure that I had both of them. All right, I'm gonna roll this around here. And now I'm gonna flip you guys around and we'll put these on so you can see them, okay? All right, hi, whoa, bright. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna bring it a little bit closer to me and we shall put one of these on. Sherry says, so pretty and sassy. They are sassy, I like a sassy earring. Oh yeah, those are super sassy. I really, really like these. These are fun. And it's a big earring, but you can definitely take this down so they're not nearly as big. But can you imagine these filled up, every single loop filled up with a bead? That would be awesome. Like a cha-cha earring set and a cha-cha bracelet to go with. I think that would be fabulous. So. Yeah, I am really, really impressed with how these turned out. I think they're really fun, and you can take it a lot of different ways. You can turn it into a pendant. Just keep going. Like, you could have runway earrings. I'm never brave enough to wear anything bigger than this, but could you imagine, like, making shoulder dusters out of these? Like, you could get really big and crazy. That would be so fun. All right, you guys. Oh, it's been fun and I have been goofy. You guys, I never seem to disappoint when it comes to the goofiness. So you're always gonna get that here for sure. Oh, thank you, Emma. Emma says prayers for your safe journey. Thank you. I really, really appreciate that very, very much. I am um I'm I'm not necessarily a nervous flyer per se. The 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 flying part doesn't bother me. It's the airport part that stresses me out. It's not that it scares me or it's just very anxiety ridden when you go to the airport our airport here in knoxville is very small and the tucson it's not a joke it's like the tiniest airport in the whole world but i have a layover in denver and the denver airport is massive and i will be spending a couple of hours there and it is overwhelming you know it, it so that part of the trip kind of I don't know. That's my, my least favorite part, but that's okay because that's just the beginning of the journey, right? Once I get to Tucson, it's nothing but good things. It's going to be a very fun trip. I'm going to have some Facebook lives for you guys. I don't know if they will be here on Sarah Ellis designs, but, um, they will definitely be over on Jesse James speeds. We'll probably be with the beetle on crew cause that's my second family too. And, um, we'll have some videos with them as well. Um, other than that, I will not have a regular schedule for next week as far as projects, but the week after that, I will have lots to talk about as far as the trip and all of the new things that I plan on buying while I'm there. I'm going shopping, you guys. You know I'm going shopping. Um, and we will start right back up with our regular schedule. So that's it. You guys have a wonderful Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Those of you who are going to be in Tucson, I cannot wait to see you. Those of you who are staying behind, I will have lots of stories to tell you and lots of videos to share. And you guys just think happy thoughts for me and I will take my Clorox wipes with me. <laughs> have a great weekend. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.